Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat. I'm in conversation with Samir Yajnik, President, Global Services and Chief Operating Officer, Asia Pacific for Tata Technologies. Mr. Yajnik, let's start. What does Tata Technologies do? I, I hear you're in extremely high tech, uh, in the high tech industry. Well, not quite. Actually, Tata Technologies is in the business of partnering with ambitious manufacturing companies, Okay. Uh, <laughs> particularly companies which engineer products to the marketplace and want to realize their product. It's a part of the product realization process. Okay. Bringing it to their customers either faster, cheaper or in a better way, we call it. So one of the criticisms of the Indian IT industry and Indian industry in general is that the innovation quotient is low. What is the reason for this? A, is the criticism warranted and B, if yes, what's the reason for this? Most companies actually, uh, if I may say, if I may generalize, uh, coming from the IT space or in fact the engineering outsourcing world, Suresh, they tend to attack the problem of building customer relationships through low-end work. Okay. You know, let's start with doing something for you. With the outsourcing, then, with the... Uh, yeah, with, with doing some data conversion work <coughs> and all that. You know, we kind of use the approach that if we have to partner okay. and improve their product development process and improve their products ultimately for okay. their customers, and, and remember I use the word ambitious, uh, we've got to really get in, in a space where we can realize business value quickly. Okay. You know, so we straight away go after companies who are either looking at redesigning their product. Recently mm -hmm. there was an announcement you might have heard where we, we are trying to repurpose a business jet um, an aircraft for an Italian company, they're looking to make it into a marine surveillance aircraft. Okay. So that really requires Out of the fairly box thinking deep it domain. Requires. Yeah, it requires deep domain expertise in the aerospace world. You need to do weight calculation, you need to strip out the interiors, you need to put surveillance aircraft, I mean surveillance equipment, etc. So it's completely rechanging the purpose of that aircraft. Okay. So when you talk about the innovation quotient, if you've got the capability, okay. now we, there are a lot of Roots before you see the shoot, but we we acquired uh, you know a company way back in 2005, and we integrated a, a global engineering model around that, wherein we have fairly high domain experts. I mean, people who are understand either automotive, aerospace, or industrial machinery, okay. and couple that with in the Indian expertise, the Indian okay. engineer, okay. smart Indian engineer, so that we can rub shoulders with people who are innovating okay. and then partner with them to build better products, okay. cheaper or increase their market share as they become ambitious and go into other territories. Right. One of the products that busted the myth that India is not an innovative country, of course, is the Tata Nano. Sure. When everybody, when they saw the Tata Nano, this is our iPod, this is our contribution to the world of design and engineering. Why aren't there more Tata Nanos? Why aren't multiple companies in this? same business. What seems to be the roadblock? I can tell you about our uh, journey after the Nano because you know we used concepts of frugal engineering, concepts of positioning a product correctly in the marketplace and then taking it, uh, you know, taking the relevance of that product in the marketplace and taking okay. it. So it's not, innovation is not uh, purely about increasing the engineering content in a product. Mm -hmm. From that experience, we've actually uh, had people come to us from different walks, from different industries and say, can you make our product more marketable in the... Can you make it more sexy? Sexy more. is one part, but marketable cheaper okay uh, well not cheaper really but more economical more cost or, effective or effective for, for that market okay. you know so can you shave off okay. uh, certain functions which are not required for a certain market okay so things like that i think uh, you know the word cheaper was uh, out of context but really relevant for that marketplace so okay. all i can say is that you know uh, it's i can tell you our experience and are there more uh, innovations coming up. We help our customers. Okay. So you know that was one example. We we have examples in the aerospace world. We have examples in the industrial machinery space where we okay. are we we completely innovating for um, improving their products and making them relevant for the markets that they want to uh, address. As a technology leader yourself, what are the top three things that keep you awake at night? Three tech challenges that you that are top of your mind and keep you awake to make sure your company is on its toes all the time. Engineering is not throwing stuff over the wall. Okay. So for us, the importance of maintaining and building that global engineering model, okay. wherein we can genuinely partner with our customers is not that easy. It's not just, you know, we have a model, okay. but to apply that in different cultures, different spaces. That's a big challenge. That's a huge challenge. Okay. Two is we need to scale. We've got to now take that uh, successful model and look at 
making them into not 25 customers but making okay. you know 200 customers over okay. the next course of time so global and scale global and scale okay and then most importantly is at all times you know be profitable and be able to be so global, addressing scale and profitable, profitable. <laughs> that's Samir Rajnik's mantra for how to run an effective technology business Samir Rajnik thank you for talking to us it's been great it's my pleasure thank, and thank you. you for watching once again it's youtube.com slash nascom ilf 2013 to catch this video and many others